there's the Sands of Time on 800 CJBQ. 45 years ago for that song now, 1970. And here's the, the drummer for Bedwood Rocker. And, of course, it started out kind of as the Sands of Time. Steve Smith's here. How are you, Steve? Good, 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 Freddie. Good can you be here. Can you imagine that's 45 years ago? For, yeah, uh... that's scary. <laughs> really scary. Really, though, I mean, that song, uh, if it wasn't for that song, would you be sitting here right now, do you think? Probably not. Um it actually it did very well for us and when it was released in 1970 that was my last year of high school and it actually went to uh number two in canada and on uh, the top 10 in the states and uh did very very well and we ended up doing a follow-up album but which never got released and got into some problems with record companies right. and stuff like that but uh but you guys were so young you said you're in your last year of high school and that thing was, yeah oh, so, you all were um, right right around that age right? yeah well dave conley was the youngest he was uh Dave's only 15 when we put that out, and we had moved to Toronto uh, the year after to try to promote the record. But in those days, um, with the union, you had to live in a jurisdiction for six months before you could actually get any work there. So we literally starved to death and for about a year and then came home with our tail between our legs and <laughs> started all over again. So. But you're young. That's how, you know, when you're that age, <laughs> that's what you do, right? Yeah, I mean, that's right. That's how you try to make it. But yeah. I mean, you guys do, do, I mean, you guys are just kids and you're touring all over Canada yeah. with on, on that record and, and uh, doing big things. So yeah, young. It, was, uh, it was a really good time. And, uh, you know, um, it's been a long time since and, uh, no hit records since, but, uh, have come close a few times with Bentwood Rocker. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a release in 81 um, called uh, Take Me to Heaven, which did very well in Europe, but uh, it didn't do much in the North American market. But, uh, you know, you just, you do it because you love it, though. That's the main thing. Yeah, well, tell know. me about, like, the I mean, Sands of Time eventually morphed into uh, Bentwood yeah, Rocker. Yes, that's correct. Um, I joined Sands of Time in 1968. I replaced a guy named uh, Al, Al O'Hara. Oh, yeah, Al O'Hara. Yeah. Right, right. <clears throat> and uh, after there was Tim Campbell and myself, Dave Conley, Eric Berger, Mike Gettler. Um, and then uh, in 1978, uh, we formed Bentwood Rocker, which was essentially uh, Mike Gettler and Eric and I. And we added Danny Thompson and Tim Campbell. forgot he was in the Sands of Time as well. And Tim was in Bentwood Rocker mm -hmm. up until 1981, 82, when Barry Haggerty from Peterborough joined mm -hmm. the band. And that lineup's been together uh, ever since then, Since right? then, yeah. yeah. So re really, Eric and Mike and I have played together since 1968. Man, oh man. You guys must like each other. Yeah, I th it's like a marriage, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's probably, you probably spend more time with those guys when you're on the road than you do with your significant others, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a lot of the music from Bentwood's early days came out of a, a studio on Charles Street, right? Yep, that's correct. Um, so now Eric has uh, all the digital stuff and the Pro Tools, and yeah. uh, we've been working out of his basement yeah. again for the last two years, working on this new album that we're just uh, getting ready to do something with. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken a long time. There's actually 17 cuts, and we're trying to uh, get it down to you know 11 or 12 cuts and uh, i brought you five i believe to have a listen nobody's really heard this stuff actually nobody is this the world premiere is that what you're telling yeah me? this is it this is the world premiere of this <laughs> okay. stuff so. okay but uh, well, let's play one let's play one and then we'll talk a little more sure sure um oh. i like um well there's one called we're kind of morphing into kind of a country rock thing but we're still sticking to our our rock and roll roots right uh, this one cut is called perfect love and uh, it, of course, features Barry Haggerty on lead guitar, and it's it's sort of countryfied, country rock. Yeah. But uh, you know, you uh, you can decide for yourself. All right, let's listen to it. Perfect love. It's Bentwood Rocker on CJBQ. <laughs> Every morning when I wake up, she's the cream in my coffee cup. 
Drifted away. There's Bentwood Rocker on 800 CJBQ, and before that, Perfect Love. Two new tracks from the band. Steve Smith, drummer for Bentwood, is here with me in the studio. Matt, who is Eric still writing the stuff? Who's writing that stuff? Well, man? actually, yeah, Eric's kind of the main songwriter as usual. But yeah. That last cut you heard, uh, "Life's Drifting Away," was actually written by Mike Gettler. Oh yeah. With a co-write with Eric. Uh huh. And uh, you know, uh, "Perfect Love" is uh, one of Eric's. He's always sort of been our sort of primary guy. He brings yeah. the main idea, and then we all collaborate. And yeah, the melody. Yeah. I mean, uh, he has an ear for melody, doesn't he? I mean, because yeah. all of those. You hear them about two or three times, you're going to be able to sing it. I yeah. mean, that's a great song, a sign of a great song, where you only need to hear it a few times, and yeah. it's already, you know what, you know, you know, you know how to sing along with it. And that, yeah, those, sure. those songs are like that. Great, it's great yeah, stuff. Drifting Away, I, it was, wasn't my favorite when I, we first uh, started listening to them, but then it's really grown on me. I think that's sort of the one. Yeah. Although, you know, Perfect Love is a more up-tempo, kind yeah. of countryfied guitar thing going on. Of course, Barry Haggerty on guitar. He's yeah. A, 
his forte is that country picking stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's rock and roll though. It really, yeah. like you said, you guys aren't you're still rocking. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, sure. it, it really has a rock and roll. Yeah, and there's it. some rockier stuff on the on the album, whatever that's going to look like. I say we have 17 cuts and we're kind of narrowing it down. So, but there's some rockier stuff there, more rock sort of uh, genre than yeah. what you've heard so far. So uh, what's the plan? I mean, this is still in the works. We're playing them on the air today, but uh, this isn't out yet. It's not released yet. When do you think? Uh, well, that's gonna we're happen? just trying to get some feedback from people like yourself yeah uh, i mean you've got a great following with your show and um you know i think our the sort of generation that would uh be interested in this material would be you know be listening and uh, yeah uh eric's got some stuff he's going to try to put out on the net and you know go that route yeah but, uh, it's just tough i mean it's the, changed so much i mean since you guys started we were talking yeah. about santa time and all that going yeah. back to the 60s think of what has changed not just well, first of all, just the way you record songs now, but le but the whole business has changed. Is how you get a song out there now, yeah, and with exactly. the internet and everything, it's a whole different ball game yeah, now, it's isn't really it? Tough. Yeah. You know, although you know, back in the day, we didn't have the internet. Yeah. You basically had to audition, and yeah, we got our first recording deal uh, through Quality Records in 1970 with a fellow named John Driscoll, and we yeah. recorded "I've Got a Feeling" uh, with the Sands of Time up at. Uh, RCA Studios on Mutual, and, yeah. and Anne Murray was in there doing Snowbird at the time. At the time, oh yeah. Gosh. So, uh, and then uh, when uh, we had done a based on the strength of that single, Atlantic Records was interested in us, and yeah. we did a showcase for them at uh, the Nickelodeon in Toronto shortly after the release of uh, of I've Got a Feeling. But uh, at that time, uh, Tim Campbell had left the band, so. And we didn't have a replacement guitar player yet, right. so I think we bombed the audition, you know. But, and uh, plus there was other things, too. We had some contract problems with yeah. the original company, and Atlantic didn't want to touch us because of all that. So yeah. band just essentially broke up until uh. we re reformed as Bentwood Rocker yeah. in 1978. Ah, the music business. Isn't that a wonderful well, thing? Tough. <laughs> it's tough. But no, I mean, the internet is, is great in one way in that you can directly get to your fans. You don't need a record deal yeah. anymore, yeah. you know. You put it out there, and the people can get to you directly now for sure and but it's a whole different wide world of music now than yeah. it was even 10 years ago 15 years mm -hmm, ago i suppose sure. well i'm so glad you guys are still doing it i yeah, mean and why and uh, and now it, it really is a labor of love for you guys yes, right for sure yeah lifelong friends are still making music together yeah i myself i'm retired now from the my government job for <laughs> four years so now i'm playing in like three or four bands just to be able to play because i love yeah. to play i don't right. care whether it's the the local bar or we're doing a big show or something you know, like big that. show or whatever um you know i just want to play and mm -hmm. to me that's what it's always been about it's never been about making money or yeah well although it helps but yeah. uh that's so why I used to tell the kids down at the music store, you know, like if you if you think you're going to make a million dollars in this business and you're in it for the wrong reason, yeah. if you're going to be playing music your whole life, you got to do it because you love playing music. You know, absolutely. It. That will get you through everything. Yes, Just the, the love of music. Otherwise, you're not going to laugh. Yeah. Let's play one more track before we say goodbye here from Bentwood Rocker. New material on the way. Watch for it. Where can they find you guys? I know on the, we're talking about internet. You're on the internet. I know that I with Bentwood. I you know, bentwoodrocker.com. I do. Yeah, that's right. You can, everything you need to know is there on, on the website. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate this. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Steve Smith from Bentwood Rocker. Let's hear one more. I love this track. If you love harmony singing, you're going to love this song from Bentwood. This is called Trust on 800 CJBQ. You told me to trust you Cause you always know what's good for me So I just accepted What you put in front of me How could I know that For every door you closed behind There was a secret Dirty, deep and dark
是。